Okay, first off, Claudia, a lot of people who really love your your work, they they love the fact that you are, you know, they always compliment you on your your editing, but most importantly, they compliment you on how you speak to the truth rather than an algorithm. And I wonder if you found a kindred spirit in in James because I feel like that's the a similar kind of way you go go about your your artistry, both of you. So yeah, I, I feel so lucky to have been a part of this project because James, you know, amongst all the chaos that's happening in this film, there's such a heartbeat to it. And it's it's so much about just two people wanting to connect and understand each other's boundaries. And um, that is something that I'm always chasing in my work is that vulnerability and intimacy. And so even if it's not done necessarily in the best of ways, Chuck tries, he really did. <laughs> um, I, I found that to just be really interesting and, and fun to work with because it did feel like a reflection of kind of what I'm always searching for, so. James, I, I guess this is in general, what's the key to telling a part of your story and being personal and being truthful, but also bare bones, you really have to execute the story as a screenwriter. What is that balance you have to create? Is it just allowing yourself to fail time and time again on the right on the writing? It's a beautiful question, man. Yeah, I mean, 100%. You have, you have to think about the metaphorical truth uh, underneath real events. And more than anything, it has to resonate sometimes more deeply than real events did or uh, and you have to make it entertaining but but it's about yeah it's about uh on the page it's about uh just l l trying to be as unfiltered as you can and then creating structure on top of that this movie is about someone who's doing the wrong thing for the right reason because he loves this person in his life and he's so he's worried about him he wants to make sure he's okay and so um it was really about chasing that uh, feeling uh, in myself. What does it feel like when I want to connect with someone and I can't? Um, and and writing as much as I could from that perspective, me and then creating the moral challenges of. But this is dishonest. How, how is he going to navigate this? And and you know, continue to try to think of himself as a good person. I just have a curious question. Both of you are editors, and I was wondering if. I know both of you have lives to, to lead, but do you guys ever get lost in the weeds in a good way in your various projects and just stay in your room and editing and editing? Is there a detriment to the, that or is there a joy in the fact that you were just immersed in your respective works? I was lucky to have a, an incredible editor on this project, Josh Crockett. And I knew the editing was going to be key in this movie because so much of the comedy and the story re relies on the juxtaposition through, uh, uh, of Franklin and Becca and Chuck and his world. And so I, we, I really needed to storyboard the entire movie ahead of time and almost pre-edit it. Uh, which allowed us to not get so lost in the edit, but it was really then just a matter of carving it out and making sure that uh, it was as coherent as it possibly could be. Yeah. My, you, my, yeah. my experience with editing is exactly as described. It's it's going into a dark hole. Usually it's happening in the middle of the night and um, I'm sure James can relate on this. When you do have such a strong vision of what you want to create, editing can sometimes feel like this, um, this kind of like anxious in between that you know where it needs to go and where it needs to get to. And sometimes it takes some figuring out and some exploring within post-production. And so it's most often the stage that I'm trying to rush through as fast as I can because I know where it needs to be and where it needs to get. Um, and so it's, I mean, I feel like in so many ways, like so much magic happens in the editing. That's where everything comes together as one. Final quick question, right off the top of your head, can both of you name one of your all time favorite movies and what is it about this film that speaks to you even today? So. Okay, I oh my God, I'm thinking of Fight Club right now. Love, love Fight Club. <laughs> and just, just the psychology of it. And um, I mean, honestly, in many ways, like that is kind of what drew me to I Love My Dad too. I'm trying to say this really fast, where there is just, Things are happening that are not actually happening in real life. And that is very cool. James. <laughs> I, I mean, Apocalypse Now is probably my favorite film of all time just because of its scope and ambition. And I know that it cost Coppola everything to make. And he, put, he it was such a risky endeavor for him to make. And, and that's definitely the 
kind of filmmaker that I aspire to be is, is how much of myself can I put into this project? And uh, that that's the movie I've probably seen more than any other. Thank you guys so much. I really love the film. And by the way, one more thing. Thank you so much for supporting Horizontal over Vertical Video, Horizontal all the way. So thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> okay. You get it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care.